52. The Jerry Ryan Show, Monday to Friday, 9 till 12 on 2FM. Messing, I hate it. Don't I'm against it. Are you, Tommy? I'm all for it. I'm against it, Tommy, and I brought you in here to tell you how we're very disappointed in all the messing that you've delivered lately. My next guest is no stranger to physical challenge. In fact, he's been involved in one this very morning. Two years ago, he took part in the Dublin City Marathon, but today he's here to talk about a very different kind of marathon, a comedy marathon, which will undoubtedly push him to the very limits of his physical and indeed intellectual capabilities, such as they are. Tommy Tiernan, you're very welcome to the programme. Thank you very much. Um, you've described I'm near the end of both those things already without having even started it. That's true. I'm uh, I'm on I'm on the precipice of sanity and health. The precipice of, you look very healthy. Do I? That's yeah. why I just come up this morning from Galway on a motorbike and I'm I'm wind blown rather than uh, effervescent. This was this was a sort of a West of Ireland Dennis Hopper <laughs> moment. Um, easy e- roader. Easy roader. <laughs> easy roader if he could. Um, all the way from Galway on a motorbike. What kind of motorbike have you got? I have a Harley Davidson. <sighs> Lots of big things like a caravan. It's like a caravan between my legs, sir. And uh, I rode that all the way up. So. And uh, you're allowed to have that, are you? You don't have to hide it from from children, girlfriends, girlfriends. Children, oh, no, it's all wives, parents. it's all allowed. It's all yeah. allowed. Yeah. yeah, I've a I'm allowed a circle of divilment. And I, uh, that's part of it. Of course, Gay had the L Harley there for a while, didn't he? He does. And I was talking to him recently, and he says he's still out, gets up on the bike uh, every second day. He says, you know, yeah. so he's uh, uh, yeah, he's flying the flag there. Great man. Larry Mullen, of course, he's another man for the bike too as well. Good fingers, Larry. Yeah. Wrists, on the wrist. Yeah. Great <laughs> great example of how to avoid arthritis as well, you know, because yeah. that happens to the drummers, God help them. Now, um, first of all, I'd just like to say um, that it was very unfortunate, the whole thing that happened on the Late Late Show. I'd like to personally take this opportunity... <laughs> Tommy, I don't know why you're laughing, to distance myself because everything was going well for me there really? up until you came on and then my career was fecked down the jacks in one brief I, moment. I feel a bit like a, a Tarzan. You're Satan, Tommy. Tarzan. Actually. No Satan. Do you know the way... Uh, Some of the same letters are in there but really? it's Satan I'm thinking of. Do you know the Tarzan was in the jungle and he was fine getting on with the monkeys and yeah. he was having the crack and he was swinging from tree to tree yeah. and he was in his underpants and no one paid a blind bit of bother and he was oh. friend of all the animals. And then he gets brought back to England uh, to a dinner party and he makes a holy show of himself. Well, I feel a bit like that. I feel a bit like I was taken from my natural environment which are the live venues of Ireland mm-hmm. and then put in a... Uh, uh, at a dinner table with uh, Opus Dei and the Knights of Columbanus and I let myself down, you know. And they were all there that night. Well, they're, um, they're, they're in the wings. <laughs> they're, all, they're the hidden vultures. But in fact, you did have a Grey Stoke entrance, if I recall. Which only you saw. <laughs> <laughs> I came down like a monkey. He is a bit of a monkey, an absolute monkey. Now, uh, the comedy marathon, of course, could he just do something that didn't involve controversy? This is one of the few people who could raise money for a charity who turn around and say they don't want it. Thanks very much. Yeah. Graciously they did, but still nonetheless. Tell no, us it's no, it's no, Jerry, it's not gracious. All right. Well, let's... It's, the, op- it's the opposite of gracious, which, which is... is ungracious. Ungracious, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you saved me <laughs> floundering for a word I wasn't, wouldn't be able to find there. Uh, it's... it's, it's um, Tell us, go, let's go through it though, first of all. You're going to do the... Co- th- this is going ahead anyway, the comedy yeah. marathon, to get you into the Guinness Book of Records. What's involved there? Well, it's a 36-hour gig that starts at three o'clock on Good Friday and goes to dawn on Easter Sunday. Mm. And... Uh, uh, I wanted to genuflect in my own way. Uh, perverted genuflection. A perverted thought. genuflection, but yeah. a genuflection nonetheless. Yes. Um, and uh, doing a gig for that long always kind of interested me in the types of uh, comedy you you might end up being able to access and, and the stuff you'd get up to. And can you repeat anything? No, you can't, no. Oh. Uh, so it's, it's, to, it's, to, it's to go to the end of yourself and uh, see what's there in terms of your imagination and... Uh, in terms of humour. God, you'll be reading old Viginity scripts by the end of it. Well, if it, if uh, that might happen quite close to the end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, so what we did, when I moved to Galway first in 1988, I worked with Galway Youth Diocesan Services and I ran a youth club for them and I um, I stayed, uh, I worked as a, a helper in a probation hostel uh, for young teenagers. But none of those allegations were ever proved, sure they weren't? There were, this, was the, no. this was the days before <laughs> that kind of thing was... Uh, <laughs> Frowned on. Yeah, yeah, it was gently allowed. <laughs> um, as long as no one was hurt. Mm. So, I approached the charity and they said, the Galway Youth Diocesan Services, who help marginalised and uh, 
they call it the, the hidden homeless. Um, young fellas who would be uh, struggling. And uh, they said the money was really, really needed. And this is money that would help them maybe put a deposit on a flat or money that would help them. Young fellas who are sleeping in car parks uh, would help them uh, maybe start an ankle course or a false course or whatever it is and, and uh, aid them. And the charity and the board said that they were delighted. We, this is absolutely fantastic. Particularly at this moment in time when operations like that are becoming marginalised themselves. Yeah. Uh, and they put it on their website. We're delighted to be associated yeah. with this event. Um, and as much as the money they were saying, the profile is really important. It's really important that kids in the west of Ireland, in Galway, know that this exists. Mm. So there's a place for them to come in and say, look, I'm experiencing trouble. I've, I've been thrown out of home. Uh, what do I do? Um, and then I did the it all happened on Monday I did uh, a radio show uh, hosted by Keith Finnegan on Galway Bay FM which would be the most listened to show uh, in County Galway would have everybody from um, Catholics to atheists listen to it it's it's, uh, a, it's a, a broad b- demographic yeah absolutely um, and when I finished that show mentioning the events I was going to do having had the full backing of the board uh up on the website, we're delighted to be associated with it. Phone calls were made to the diocese, diocese from people. And by that night, the diocese issued a statement saying that we do not wish to be associated with, with the event. So a bunch of well-meaning but psychotic people got in touch with them and said, look, but, but down with that sort of thing. N- yeah, but not even as, you know, on a, on a, in a th- I can enter a theological argument with somebody as to why uh, this is why I'm comfortable with this and being a Christian in the, the comedy event. But the... Um, Are you a Christian? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, th- well, theoretically, you know, there's only one Christian and he died on the cross. Right, okay. Right, so I'm... Right. Uh, You're a follower of Christ. Yeah, yeah I'm making a hames of it, but I'm... Yeah. Uh, well, I'm walking... I'm, your, to, we're, I'm, I'm slouching towards Bethlehem. Is all right, I'm your brother. Right, okay. Hold right. hands. Right. <laughs> Hold hands and get the lamb. Yeah. Um, uh, I... The, the a priest came on the radio yesterday to defend the position that they'd taken. Um, I said that I'm going to do the I'm going to do the gig for them anyway, and I'm going to present them with the money uh, because it's not about it's not a the, this isn't a theological argument. This is about money for teenagers sleeping in car parks. And the priest came on uh, uh, I radio I one two one four yesterday, yeah. and he said, "Well, it's just that some people." are very uncomfortable with the diocese being associated with this type of event. Is it this type of event or just you? Well, I was saying to somebody earlier on, you know, if I, if you can imagine, if I was fasting on Good Friday, a sponsored fast, or if I was, you know, humming with Noreen Nireen for 48 hours. Sounds good. <laughs> does it? <laughs> 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 uh, they wouldn't have a problem with it. But the fact that it's me and the fact that it's comedy is uh, has got some people's craw going the priest came on the radio and he said um, that some people in the diocese were uncomfortable with uh, a comedy show on such a solemn day and in everything but these must have been fairly influential people to be able to move on that well if I was guessing and I have no uh, legal justification for this and I I, my guess my guess and I I want to say this in a way that no one gets sued Mm, right thank you right so am I (laughs) is it if I say it's my guess, does that make it make it okay? Mm, it depends. So you don't need to name anybody, but it could be the type of person that might be saying it. All right. Uh, he'd be called after a piece on a chessboard. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Um, uh, it's come from it's come from there, and okay. people who are work uh, for the for the uh, Goa Youth Diocesan Services have told me as much. Okay, and, and they, to the extent that they felt that they had no option but to say no to you, not only to say not, uh, we don't want to be uh, associated with uh, the comedy event, but we, even if you wish to give us the money, we can't accept it. We won't, but it's, Jerry, it's, it's not, the problem with it is that in all their objections, they don't mention the young fellas. They don't say uh, the, this money for these children is needed but, you know, um, is there any other way you can give it to us? It's just no. And their objections are all theological. Nothing to do with uh, how it might help people who need the help. And what was the theological articulation? What I mean, this it's, is very sophisticated. Because it's laughter yeah. and jokes 
and Tommy Tiernan having a laugh on Good Friday. And you're not meant to do that. It's a, they, they, Their statement, they said, the Irish people take Good Friday very solemnly and very seriously and we're not comfortable with being associated with this type of event. All right, well, that is true. It is a very solemn event. It is a very so- sombre experience. But Jesus, I, I always, said, yeah. Jesus said that the Sabbath exists for man. Man does not exist for the Sabbath. So the Pharisees were given out to him because he was doing something on the Sabbath which he shouldn't have been doing. He should have been at Mass somewhere. And he said, no, you, you got the wrong end of the stick here. People come first, not any uh, notion of behaviour on certain days. Well, I always, my default position, this is always, first of all, and I recall getting into a lot of trouble over this memory when I described Christ as um, a Palestinian uh, terrorist, which of course he was, as far as the Romans were concerned. A very efficient one at that. But... Wait, imagine, suicide, I'm a, kind of a, <laughs> not a suicide bomber. What would you call him? Oh, no, he's, you know, he's polar opposite to a suicide bomber because he didn't deliver himself willingly initially. Don't forget that. Yeah. But can you imagine? Christ walks in the door. Uh, Jesus is great. Thanks very much for turning up to the pro. It's wonderful. You know, Tommy Turner, of course, you're omnipotent. You're everywhere. You've been, yeah, and you've the DVD. You like it, do you? Great. And imagine you said to Christ, Christ, th- Tommy was going to do this thing for the diocese of guys in the West there and it's the homeless boys and everything like that. And they say that theologically it's not sound to be associated with because there might be a bit of laughter involved and it's Good Friday. Yeah, I know that was a bad day for you. I understand that. Do you think you would honestly actually turn around and go down with that sort of thing? They made the right decision. No, he'd be appalled. Well, you know, none of us can second guess what Jesus would do. He might surprise us all. Well, you're looking at Jerry Ryan now, Tony. <laughs> so, uh, but I think as uh, human beings here and now taking responsibility for um, uh, trying to love each other, I think it's a scandalous decision. By the All right, what does everybody listening think? 185752. So what are you going to do? Because you're going to go ahead with this. Undoubtedly, given um, your sense of drive and um, now, indeed, I would imagine, e- 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 exaggerated um, desire to see this through. I, I, you're going to do it. You will raise money. I've no doubt about it. And then you're going to turn up with the dosh. What, what's going to happen? Are they going to go, get away from us. Stop that. Give, take it away. Yeah, they've said what's going to happen is there's going to be a young fella uh, sitting in the kitchen of the house who doesn't have the money uh, to pay rent for the next two weeks. And I'm going to arrive at the door with money, with a check uh, raised uh, from this charity event. And a priest is going to say, no, he can't have it because uh, you told jokes on Good Friday. Well, that's just going to be ridiculous. That's going to be, well, it's mortifying. It's real. So now you can't stuff it down somebody's throat. So what do you do with it? Could you give it to a third party and they could give it? Somebody who was untainted by laughter. Oh, really? <laughs> Joe Duffy? No. <laughs> Joe could give it. No. Joe, I'm sure he'd be delighted. Um, uh, you'd get two weeks publicity out of that anyway. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll cross that bridge, but they... Mm. Uh, uh, are you very what, what's your, what what do you feel about this now what 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 are your feelings well part of me is uh saddened and part of me and I, you know i find it very easy to get up on the motorbike of indignation mm. and that's not really going to help the situation so uh i'm just we're going to do it we're going to get the money and we're going to find a way uh even if it means uh setting up a board of trustees for these young fellas that is uh, completely divorced from the diocese um, we'll get the money to them somehow. And uh, they were all very excited about the project and very excited about coming down and helping helping out with it over the weekend. And uh, I mean, literally, you're going to have to wash it through, uh, down with that sort of thing, dot com, pass it through Father Dougal, who'll bring it back to the mainland and it will have no laughter associated I with I should get it that guy that uh, who's in, sent to jail down in Cork, you know, to try and wash it for me. Um, I don't know. It's a... Uh, uh, it's bizarre... But it's it's real, you know. And I just wonder who the people were who are saying no. I I because it was going fine. The, but they, also, they, they, had, they had accepted it, Jerry. They, what, they what, said I'm, yes. what I'm confused about, and uh, you know, we were talking about the captions this morning, the friars, and and what they do with every Wednesday, giving out the food parcels. Usually, these guys, fellows involved in this kind of project, indeed, the guys involved in the diocesan home homeless project that that you're um, aiming to try and assist. 
they usually are fairly on the fringe themselves. You know, they're usually the kind of fellas who can't be told what to do. They're usually the sort of fellas who they're, they're working at the coal face. They see reality and therefore they're not that interested in intellectualising it. But these people, they're the people who said yes. They're the people so who... That, but they're now being bullied and pushed around. There's, a, there's another presence in the room. Oh my God. A you know, poltergeist. A poltergeist. <laughs> there's, there's somebody, this is another influence. They said yes to it. They're the ones that typed it up and put it on their website. They're the ones that said we're delighted. There's another influence here. And this sounds uh, almost uh, Manchurian, but it's this is happening. Uh, another pressure that is not their day to day, that has no financial worries that lives in some theological ivory tower where everything is, you know, how many angels are dancing on the head of a pin. Saying you, you, you'll you, be in trouble if you do this. Saying, no, saying we fund you, you, you're not taking this money. Well, that's not a great position. That is not a good position. 1857 the Ryan line is open. Now, on a more uplifting note, the actual marathon itself um, we hope that this will not darken the uh, comedy content of it to any. Uh, I know it won't. No, and and this is just you know this is a, uh, a kind of a in terms of the actual event itself and the the work of the thirty six hours. This is just outside interference, you know. Um, but the actual event itself will be. Uh, how are you chaotic. prepared? How do you train for such an event? I train for this the way I train for most things, Jerry. I have coffee and worry. Mm. Will you be using new material? Because, you know, the, all, well, the notorious meanness of the comic, you know, not to use up all the material in one go. Uh, but how will you deal with that? Um, I Because it's 36 hours, I'll probably be doing everything yeah. that I ever come up with, uh, plus uh, 35 hours of good new stuff. <laughs> You know, so um, th- it's, it's everything I'll be doing. Oh, will you be asking for the assistance of the public? I mean, absolutely. Would you like for us to feed your lines? Yeah, I'll be doing material uh, that I like that other comedians do. I'll be doing cover versions of Billy Connolly and Eddie Izzard and yeah. uh, Conal Gallen and Noel V. Guinnessy. I'll be doing everything. And th- part of my reason for doing this was sometimes when I'm trying to come up with a show, I get too tight in my head about wanting it uh, to be doing a certain style of material. Um, my idea with doing this was to get to the end of any... Uh, notions I might have about my own style and just empty myself of all that and be silly and have fun. Do you know what I'm afraid of here? This is a medical issue. Um, um, Having watched you perform live, having seen you on DVD and on the small screen and the large stage, is the huge physical effort and endeavour and indeed the kind of hyperactive um, element to your performance. I'd be worried about your heart. This will be slow though. This is, this is going to be like uh, the Sex Pistol doing an album of ballads. This is going to be gentle. This is going to be the Prodigy's slow set. Uh, I'll have to take it easy. Yeah, because you couldn't... I mean, how long is the show normally? About an hour and a half, maybe two hours. Which depending. features a huge amount of running around, Something. screaming, hysteria, almost aneurysm moments. Yeah. Um, you couldn't do that for how many hours do you think we're going to be on? About 37. Yeah, you couldn't do that for... Th- or maybe you could. Where would you end up though? You'd be... You'd be naked running across the drumlins of Monaghan by the end of it. Yeah. You know, you'd be like Sweeney who got turned into the bird up in the tree. You'd be, you'd be mental. Well, Flann O'Brien would be calling for help. Yeah. Catherine, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Now, you're from Galway. I am indeed. All um, right. We have I, Satan in the studio. What do you think? <laughs> I just wanted to call and give uh, Tommy my support. And I think I speak for the majority of Galwegians when I say that I'm absolutely disgusted. Um, this gig has been advertised in all the major newspapers. There's been a lot of hype about it. And I think for somebody, you know, who's been a part of the community for so long and has contributed, you know, to the community for so long and to have the rug pulled out from under him for a charitable event like this is absolutely disgraceful and disgusting. And I'm ashamed, you know, for the... Do you have any uh, sympathy for the argument that uh, down with that sort of thing, we can't be laughing and smiling and joking on sombre Good Friday? Absolutely not. I think it's ridiculous doesn't matter what you're doing if the outcome is for, you know, the greater good. You know, if Tommy wants to walk down Shop Street naked for the day and if people, you know, with a bucket and if people put money in it, so what if it's for a good cause? Don't say that because he will do that. <laughs> Though he's still quite I'm a slim man. He could get away with it. If I walked down naked <laughs> down Shop Street on Good Friday, I would cover my privates with a 
well placed cross. With a cross, <laughs> well placed. That would certainly get your attention, the attention of the yeah, uh, of the diocese. Of I could make a cross right. out of my genitalia, actually, in, in high, thinking about it. But that would be a that would also an that, image too far, is you're it? You're not helping the uh, you're not helping the argument here, Tommy. Morning, welcome back to Bombastic FM. G Ryan at the seat here with Tommy Tiernan. We seem to have given up on trying to represent ourselves outside of Ireland, unless you're playing rugby or soccer. Tommy's trying to do something about that by going back over to the Letterman show. Now, Jay Leno has been stuffed by his employers. Letterman stays on. Has uh, Leno been... What's I that think mean? Leno's been told, you've got to go. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a bit unfortunate. Mm. Um... Of course, the Battle Royale now finishes. Uh, these were the boys who were looking for Johnny Carson's job. They both got it, basically. Um, and it's a great book about that fight, as a matter of fact. I don't know whether you've ever read that. I've it's, heard about it. I've heard oh, the story. It's very, very good. Now, I have heard stories about both Leno and Letterman that the comedians, the comedians who go, it's, they're unlike any other guests on the show because it's absolutely cutthroat, at least if you're a band or somebody who's in a movie, you kind of know you're going to go on. That's not always the way it is with the comedians, sure it's not. How do you mean you kind of know you're going to go on? Well, that you know you're definitely going to be on. That oh, what they do is, yeah, yeah. They, um, the comedy clips, the, the comedy segment of the show is always recorded on a Monday. And what they do is you meet the, the comedy booker on a Friday and he takes you around the comedy clubs of New York. You might do three or four clubs a night honing your four minutes uh, over the weekend. Oh my God, that's so, intensive, isn't it? It's very intensive, yeah. So by the time... So they would have um, uh, relationships with all these small kind of comedy clubs. They'd arrive in. My act wants to go on. You go on, you do four minutes. He takes notes. Uh, and afterwards, you sit and you go to a coffee shop and you discuss all the bits of material. Then you go to the next place and you do it again. So by the time Monday arrives, um, uh, oh. they know word for word what you're going to say. Now, the last time I did it, the second time I did it, I wouldn't be a great man for preparation like that. I, you know, it'd be more uh, instinct than intellect, really. And uh, they said to, uh, to me, so have you got your material? I said, yeah, and I, I sent it to them. I typed it up as best as I could and I sent it to them and said, is it exactly four minutes long? I said, absolutely, I've practiced it in the hotel room. It's four minutes long. <laughs> and I did it and it was eight and a half minutes long because I forgot to factor in laughter. And uh, uh, so they were a bit kind of peeved at that, but they said, we thought you were very funny and we'll have you back. So I'm back on in May. So uh, that's great. Do you get paid? Oh no, you don't. No, Sorry, that's a very God, I remember doing the Late Late Show, uh, the first time I did it, and I got a hundred and fifty quid. How much did you get the night you were on with me? I didn't got anything. Did I? Hundred and twenty. That's quid? right, because you were just there to <laughs> promote yourself. Uh, and people, people. I remember I met this fella in a pub in Navan, and he says to me, "You're a millionaire now, aren't you? You're a millionaire." Yeah, yeah. I says, yeah. I, am. I says, "Yeah, I seen you on the Late Late Show. You're a millionaire." And I, <laughs> people think when you're on the Late Late, you get about twenty grand or something. You get the price of your B and B, and you know, lunch in the Red Cow Inn or something. It's very, it's meager, but it's great. But no, I, I don't think you get paid for Letterman. No. No. I don't think so. Well, it comes, maybe or something. What, do, what, what does it mean to go on? I mean. It, I mean, the jealousy that I experienced when I read, for instance, in the notes this morning that you were going on, I went... It's... Do you know, <laughs> it's, you know, it's odd... Why him and not me? But you know, it's <laughs> odd because it's not... Uh, I don't live over there. Yeah. So you're kind of... You're, what can you do with it, as the man says? Uh, exactly. You arrive... You're, you're a multi-millionaire now, Tommy. <laughs> you arrive in the bubble of an aeroplane. <laughs> yeah. You get into the bubble of a taxi. You stay in the bubble of a hotel. And then you go to the bubble of the show. And then you come back here. So you're not, you're not, it's not like, it'd be like some, you know, it'd be like Obama coming over during the Jay Ryan show. Yeah. He's not here. He doesn't, he's not aware of the effect of it. He doesn't know what he's doing really, you know. Uh, so I don't, um, I'm not entirely sure what effect it has on it other than it's, you know, it's part of the hassle of my job to have to do these things. Well, I mean, you could say no. Do, so do you have ambitions to, uh, 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 to flee this land? No, I don't. I, you know, I, I don't really. I, I want a good life. And for me, ideally, a good life is being near my family, telling jokes at night, telling stories. So you could bring your family with you. That would be the, that's the what seven most of them. normal people do. So you bring their family. Really? <laughs> <laughs> most fellas, when they go to work, five in children country. between the age of seven months and 15 years old. Yeah, you bring them over. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well. Okay, then you stop being attractive. Okay, I'll try that. I'll try. I'm open you to that. Do that. Um, but that. you see, of course, you won't do that because you're going to stay here in Ireland where there's constant complaints about everything. And in a way, you know, maybe that's part of the fuel in your engine. No, you would never want to become... Uh, me being controversial is, you know, it's like DJ Carey scoring a point at this stage. It's not really interesting or 
um, there's nothing new in the story. And uh, I would never, I never wanted to get, and by the way, me being controversial uh, is not really real either. It's just one or two journalists who have a lot of power and profile creating stories and you might get the impression that the whole country is upset but it's a very it's a very small group of people well do you not feel because the impression certainly that uh, certain people <coughs> try to give is that you uh, that Tommy Tiernan is beloved by half the country and then the other half of the country would really like if he was struck down by a bolt of lightning uh, do you I, get a well, sense I tell you something. Say, when you walk into a pub, do you have to go, fair play to you, Tommy? You're crap, Tommy. So something like Roy Keane or something uh, like yeah. that. Not <laughs> at all. The, uh, I love being well known in Ireland and the vast majority of people coming up to me, all of them, it's all friendly. It's all delicious. It's all warm hearted. It all starts off with a laugh. Uh, it's fantastic. It's a, a, a great thing in my life. Um, what's interesting to say with the with what happened on the Late Late Show the last time with you was that the material that got me into trouble, right, two or three sentences, were, were, the, were the same jokes that in front of 120,000 people up and down the country from Donegal to Dingle, people laughed at. Mm. But you do it on television, one or two journalists don't like it. And next thing, it becomes what the other four million people who didn't but come you to see did so, you did something very unusual, something that you normally don't do. Well, you're doing it in a way, I suppose, by being here. You replied to it. You went on Live Line, and I couldn't believe that day. First of all, I couldn't believe that I went in the space for a few minutes from being having done the Late Late Show very well to being at the helm of the satanic Late Late Show. Um, uh, and then, so, but then you materialised and I thought, well, Jesus, what Tommy's now on explaining himself and sounding very serious. Maybe, maybe the classy thing to do would be, do you know when... when Why did you do that? Because I, thought, I was in the car, right? Yeah. I'm like, uh, and I'm an ordinary person and I'm in the car and I'm listening to Live Line. As we do. And uh, they're talking about me. Yeah. And I just... Mm, ah! <laughs> <laughs> dip, 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 dip. It's me! Get me on! I didn't do it! You don't understand. Well, they must be delighted. Did they believe it was you when you got through first? I believed it was me. That was the important thing. <laughs> no. Do you regret going on Live Line? Do you think you would have been better just to keep your gob shut? Uh, there might have been an element of uh, uh, class involved in not going on Live Line, but. Mm. Um, I well, you know what I mean? You, 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 you decry those who um, you've, you described as the kind of people who are not worried about where the next meal is coming from or a roof over their heads, but how many angels dance on the head of a, uh, of a pen. In a way, when you start trying to explain comedy, comedy cannot be explained. Sure. And of course, that day you nearly fell into the trap. You did fall into I the did, trap yeah. of trying to explain what you did. And the more you tried to explain, the madder it sounded. Well, I, uh, yeah, I... I Totally accept your point. You'll never do it again, <laughs> Tiernan. Maybe not. We'll you'll, see. Never, you'll never do it again. Now, let's see a couple of texts here. Fair play to you, Tommy. Most people need to stand up to these people. I love this phrase, these people. The young people sleeping rough are the ones who matter at the church should hold their heads in shame. Uh, to here, let's suggest to the priest, he didn't say he was a priest, to go homeless for a few nights and see what his opinion is. Uh, here's another. Why does it have to be on Good Friday? If the intention is to help, why not respect the uh, belief of the Catholics obviously involved here? More interested in respecting the young fellas uh, yeah. sleeping in car parks. Um, and is the intention to generate debate or interest in the event? No, did the, I are chose you, Good Friday because it... Um, you're just trying to get attention. No, it resonated with me for a reason that I... I uh, people think that I choose to be controversial, you know, that I go on the Late Late Show to be controversial in order to sell DVDs. I don't. I go on to have crack and my philosophy is when I'm performing as a comedian, it's very simple. Accept all thoughts. And uh, that's what gets me into trouble because sometimes things come into my head and I haven't, you know, they haven't been to a crash. They haven't been well raised. They're just, you know, they're just come, they're homeless. They're sleeping in a garage. They just come flying out of my head. And, but that's, I but think. But is that what you're meant to do? Absolutely. That's the crack of it. And I'd be no use, I think, to myself or to anybody else as a comedian if I, if I 
tried to police myself too much. Do you know, I, I was a big Lenny Bruce fan, right? Now, did, I was not old enough really to be there in the full state of my mental health while, while he was at, at his height. Lenny Bruce was an absolute genius, tremendously funny, very relevant, very, very, very much on the money, a great social commentator. Then he started getting in trouble with the law and the feds and he was busted time and time and time again. Slowly but surely he went mad and his stand-up became him basically reading out a selection of affidavits and scripts and social science scientists analysis of what he was doing and that's when he was banjoed completely banjoed and that's where you must never go there well i well i <laughs> i'm anybody who comes to see me live I'd, <laughs> I, I wouldn't you know th- this it's you know it's it's become what we're talking about mm. this morning mm. um but it's not it's not you know no absolutely not i would never be um the ambition all the time is to have crack that's the modus operandi the modus uh comico that's that's the job like um and it's different when i'm here when i come on here and i'm just you know i'm just off the motorbike i'm not working in a sense you know but uh and there are things that bother me obviously but in terms of my my work and divilment uh it's not i'm not here to preach i'm not here to i don't i'm not a moralist i'm not a messagist i'm divilment accept all thoughts open the head see what happens do you still are you still playing poker uh, not really, no. I, it takes too long. There's no room for... Um, when I started playing poker, you'd be sitting for hours and hours and hours and hours waiting for a hand. And I just... I prefer... I play pool. Do you want to do? Yeah. I play pool by myself. I divide myself up into two people. And I have a flamboyant, wild personality who I call Alex. And I have a safe, <laughs> careful personality who I call Steve. And they both inhabit my body for the purpose of a game of pool. And I play myself. And <laughs> what happens towards the end is that... Uh, it gets very confusing because Steve wants to play like Alex. <laughs> Alex wants to play like Steve. But that's what I do for to relax, you know. That, that's the I think the last time you were in here, you were talking about cards, if I recall. Who are you in here? Ken Doherty. Ken Doherty, who is actually quite a good yeah, poker player. And there was a poker tournament, I think, which you had taken play, part in. That's right. I, I, yeah. I flew by helicopter. <laughs> this is, these are the decades. The good days. old days. I flew by helicopter uh, from Cork to a hotel in Cavan uh, to play a poker tournament. You know. Um, I tell you, this is... Um, uh, in terms of, you know, the signs of the Celtic Tiger and stuff like that, um, I noticed this about myself and about Irish people, I think. Not very comfortable with wealth and with the signs of wealth. No. It's um, during the heyday of it, uh, and I, I bought a big car, right? I bought a big uh, secondhand BMW 7 Series. Like, this is a tank of yoke. It's four and a half litres. You're a millionaire now. It's petrol. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I never, ever felt comfortable driving it. Why? Was that afraid? You were afraid I you was, were going to be stoned or something? No, right? I just was just... Uh, uh, I just didn't sit right with me. My image of myself, it just didn't... Um, didn't f- I didn't feel comfortable people looking in, in the car and seeing me. And I, I just felt wrong, you know. I also have, which is my favourite thing in the world, I have a 1981 Ford Capri. And it is... It costs about £300. It's absolutely fantastic it's the most it goes maximum right. of 55 miles an hour does rust that used the to be known as the ride mobile oh really <laughs> there, was a, there was a joke what's the difference between a Ford Capri and a hedgehog uh, was it all the pricks that are inside the Ford Capri <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but now it's kind of a cool car right It's and it's gorgeous and when people see me in the Ford Capri they laugh and they wave fairly unstable very fast in a straight line it was in it's time yeah. but 55 mile an hour is as much as it'll do today ok right Um and it's, I love it. And I love people looking at me and that and they, they wave and they laugh and it gives them pleasure. And do you know when you're driving in your car and you see someone coming towards you, driving the same type of car as you, you always have a look, don't you? Oh, yeah. To see who's and salute. in it. And salute. If I'm driving and I see someone coming towards me in a 7Cs BMW, I never look at them. Why? Because I know they're an arsehole. Yeah. I'm so. afraid that's true. Um, with all due respect to BMW, who make fabulous cars. Yeah. The marathon will take place in the Nuns Island Theatre in Galway over the Easter weekend. For information and show times, etc., go to tommytiernan.com or you can phone Mabinog. It's uh, an old Celtic word for apprentice storyteller. That's good. On 091 564 That's 091 564 Or you can e-bail, e- email. E-bail. E-bail. <laughs> e-bail. Uh, email Mabinog at aircom.net. <laughs> That's fellas, gets farmers getting silage yeah. sent to each other in the <laughs> post. <laughs> Electronic Tickets silage. are also available uh, on ticketmaster.im. And I want to ask you to mention me on... Uh, Letterman, but you won't do that. Well, um, if we can find a way of crowbarring it in, I'll do it, Jerry. <laughs> Tommy, good to have you. Thank you. God bless.
The Will Leahy Show on 2FM. Okay, well, welcome into our studio in Limerick. Fred! Now, we're going to play a little game, right? Because you spend so much time in Canada. Called Canadian or not. Oh! oh. oh. Matthew Perry from Friends. No, I'd say that. Okay, Jamie he thinks he is. He's very skinny. Then he I need an answer. I need an answer. Does he, uh, he's very he doesn't skinny. say a boot. That he doesn't say a boot. He's not. He's, he's not. Nice. He's not Canadian, born in Massachusetts. You're yeah. right. The Will Leahy Show. Weekdays from 5 to FM. This is the Jerry Ryan Show on 2FM. Call 08457 585 285 from Northern Ireland. Oh, yeah, she's, she got the, she's offered the role of waif. Uh, I was delighted for her. But she's going on holiday, so can't take it up. I believe that you got Annie. I did. Yeah. You're I a did. bit old for Fiona, if you don't mind oh, me well, saying you know, I kind of said there shouldn't be an upper age limit. Fiona. I did want it. I genuinely got the did hair want for it. it hasn't have, she? Yeah. 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 Annie, please. I did kind of, when I was sitting on the stairs waiting for them to come out from the audition, yeah. having been kind of thuh, thuh about it the Myself whole time. Fiona now. made an appearance we did, in the queue. With our children, <laughs> our daughters, our talented daughters. But I actually, having kind of our very played talented down, daughters. very talented daughters, because they both our progressed really far yeah, through the yeah, whole thing. Yeah. Um, little I have to mention that. But I ended up sitting on the stairs and having spent the whole morning going, oh, do you know, these things are of no consequence and sure, it's good experience, but don't worry, means nothing, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I was sitting on the stairs and they'd gone in. I'd, a friend, um, Kira's friend, who was, was very talented as well, was with her as well. They'd gone in together. And I was sitting on the stairs waiting for them to come out and I was reading the papers and I suddenly thought, oh, my heart started to go really fast. And I kind of thought, God, I really want them to get this. And then I thought, oh, no. no, actually, I really want to get this. And I kind of, <laughs> I have to be honest, like, I could hear them because I'm a really good act. Well, I used to be. I, you yeah. know, I can act a bit. And I mean, yeah. obviously I couldn't sure, sing. Look at you now. You're acting your head off there. Uh, my big head off. Yeah. I, obviously I couldn't sing to that level, but I can carry a tune. Mm. But of course I'm listening to, you know, it's a hard knock life for us. And I just want to suddenly barge in and go, go look, tomorrow, tomorrow. And, you know, for them to say, well, you're a bit on the old side, but you're quite small. So, you know, we'll just yeah. kind of put you and in a vice turn down the lights a bit. Turn down the lights. Use a shitload of makeup. <laughs> Happy days. I've but some, no. I'm, I'm going to read out Final something that here. Is on today, this is going to be way. a seamless, seamless, seamless yeah, thing yeah, here. You're ready. Yeah, okay. Five weeks ago, our friends and colleagues on the Mooney Show on Radio 1 put out the call for a young girl with a big heart, a winning smile, who's not Fiona Looney and a voice that can sing us through our troubles. A girl girl who could empathise with the plight of a little orphan named Annie. In excess of 1,100 girls answered the call to come to the open auditions for the role of Annie in the smash hit musical Annie in Dublin's Olympia Theatre and the Cork Opera House later on this year. The first auditions put under 10 made it through to the heats and we've been following with great interest all this week on the movie show the progress of these little talents. And today the search for little orphan Annie is almost at an end. It's been a long road with music, Come laughter. What may. <laughs> See, I could have done it. I'm Is it too late? <laughs> no, it's never too late. It's been a long road with music and laughter and tears. A lot of tears <laughs> along the way. And it's fair to say that we've been impressed by each and every one of the candidates. Though obviously if it's one of your child children, you've been more impressed by them than anybody else. No doubt there will be more well-deserved opportunities for each and every Is one of them. Is this eating into my slot? Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> so uh, to the three young stars who've made it through to the final... <laughs> That's exactly what they are, my friends. 11-year-old Claire O'Leary from Cork. Hooray! 11-year-old Natasha Vasco from Limerick. Hooray! And 10-year-old Molly Hackett from Kildare. We say good luck, right? Only one can be Annie. Yeah. But the other two will obviously end up with a great career in IT. Yeah, emotionally <laughs> scarred for life, the other two. But good luck with that. Because that's what happened to our children. Yeah, good luck with, yeah. <laughs> good <laughs> luck with the uh, counselling that's going to be needed. <sighs> Should have been me. Now, welcome, you welcome. You could have been Daddy Warbucks. Yeah. Yeah. That's Who's a, Daddy Warbucks? Is, is that cast yet? Yeah, no. I don't I d- think it is. Oh, you know who it'll be. It'll be somebody that annoys us. <laughs> well, that could be anyone that says it. Could you narrow it down know, a bit? So you'll see Fiona <laughs> myself. We'll be at it going, we <laughs> could have done that. Yeah, it's yeah. rubbish. I went to, I was at, speaking of musicals, um, <laughs> just that text that came in there about the, the, the kid mm. asking for the two euros back. Um, I did an almost identical experience, but on a, a kind of a bigger scale last night, I took the kids to the Teachers Musical Society production of Crazy For You. 
in the O'Reilly Theatre, which I'd happily plug, but I have a feeling it's sold out. But you know what, check, it's very Crazy good. Crazy so for you, what, what is the it? The Gershwin musical. Oh, all right. okay. um, George. Which had, George and Ira, both oh, yeah. of them both together. Uh, and uh, I hadn't seen it before. It's the one that, I got rhythm, Dun. which I clearly have. I can't got rhythm, and, um, I've got rhythm, who could ask for anything more? Who could ask for anything more? Daddy Warbucks, I'm seeing it. Yeah. Um, and uh, so someone to watch over, over me. me. Anyway, very good production. But the reason we went was because one of my daughters, my older, my older daughter's teacher is in it. Um, and very good she is too. And so Kira wanted to go and see it. And anyway, I ended up, because my husband was away, so I ended up having to bring the three kids because I couldn't just leave the boy with the babysitter. He'd be too embarrassed. No, right. and so maybe 65 the euros later, yeah. four tickets, taxi there, taxi back, because obviously idiot you paid here for can't the tickets, drive. Did you? Of course I paid for the tickets. So we're up to 105 euros now. And the only reason we're going is because Kira had said, oh, I really think I probably would really like to go and see my teacher. So we're now yeah. up to 105 euros. A tenner for crap for them to eat yeah. and drink um, during it. And on the way back, as we walk out, Kira said to me, by the way, you owe me eight euros. <laughs> I think I rest my case. <laughs> it's in the DNA. It's in the DNA. Do you know what we'd be good doing? The King and I. Yeah. We would that be good. What's give me a hint on that? School teacher, show me what you can do with the children. <laughs> it's it's uncanny. You're obviously going for the whole bald headed thing. Oh okay. I mean, yeah. Brenner obviously yeah. from that, and Daddy Warbucks famously. Mm. Albert Finney was bald, wasn't yeah, he in the yeah, film yeah, version? Yeah. yeah. What about My Fair Lady? Yeah, could I could have danced all yeah. night. Oh no, actually, that's a girl's song, isn't it? Because I'm a bit common, you're a bit posh. Think of the crazy adventures we could yeah. have. Yeah. The ascot gavotte. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it'd be brilliant. What else could we do that involves a man and a woman? Sound of music. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of a bit nunnish. Edelweiss, Edelweiss. Every morning you greet me. See, see. Small and Small white. And white. Clean, and Clean bright. Clean and bright. I've got a nun beneath me. Blossom <laughs> of snow. Stop it. All right. Here we go. Here, Here we, we go. go. This Settle is it. Down. Settle, Settle down. down. Now, now. A place for everything and everything in its place, you might say. That's the mantra for running an efficient household. But throw open the kitchen cupboard, supply a little imagination, and sometimes everyday items can be useful in the most unexpected ways. Where is this going? Did you know, for example, that you can clean chopping boards with the lemons? Well, you were going to do this ages ago, weren't you? No, it's a different thing. All oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, ish. Or that you can prevent shoes from smelling with tumble dryer sheets. Fiona Looney's in the studio this morning with more unexpected uses for everyday things. Tales of the unexpected. Do, 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 do. That's meant to be Tales of the Unexpected. Someday my prince will come. What's that from? It's a Disney thing. A, All right. Uh, um, I tried to do the music from Tales of the Unexpected there, but it didn't quite hit. No, it. that no, that wasn't anything like mm. Tales of the Unexpected. Not that I'd be able to do Tales of the Unexpected. Sanson, isn't it? Oh. Isn't it Sanson wrote that? No, see, don't. see, see how clever I am. Now, tumble dryer sheets, not a thing in my world, but I have to so get them because they're just a thing I've never what used. What are they? They're sheets that you put in with the tumble, like I think Bounce is one of the trademarks. Oh, yes, and you put them yeah, in yeah, to, yeah, to yeah, stop yeah. the, um, the yeah. clothes from sticking to no, each No, I have other. everything except them. I've colour colour catchers. I've got Keep It White. Yeah, I've, I've got all them. I've got um, the Vanish Oxy Blow It Up with one yeah. go. Um, I've got the hypoallergenic uh, yeah. comfort. The I've best way. I've and I've got it all. I, I tell you, this is what you're thinking of because I did talk about this a couple of weeks ago. But for anyone who may have missed it, keeping whites white, the yeah. best way. What is it? My mother even commented to me the other day. She said, Paint. Oh, your whites are very white. What's your secret? She when said your to own you. mother. Yeah, when, you're, when a mother asks a daughter for the secret of really good Holy whites, you know, you're the secret of really good whites, and at this time of the year it's very easy to do, mm. is you choose the day, you get the weather forecast, and when it's going to be very sunny, you do your whites. And you put them out, and uh, you don't even need to use any kind of stain removers. Tomato, chocolate, any really nasty stains, put them on the line, facing the direction that the sun is going to be shining for the greater part of the day. And um, they will not only will the stains disappear, this is without treating them with anything. Oh, this is well, like bleaching them. them with light. So bleach them with the sunlight, and it makes them really white. That's pure genius. Do you know that? If the stains are particularly stubborn, squeeze a bit of lemon juice onto them. Well done. 
Now, thank you. See, it was worth my while. Well, but really tumble dryer good. sheets, um, I didn't know such a thing. Well, I did know they existed, but I just didn't bother. Because you know what? I'm not so lazy that I, I, I actually don't mind separating clothes from the dryer. I kind of, there's no part of it says I'm actually, I don't know. But do tumble dryer sheets actually keep your clothes separate? Yeah, they do. I don't know. They contain positively charged ingredients that are released by heat and movement. And stop um, ionic I comfor- the comfor- movement con- conflagration. I don't know. Um, but they bond loosely to any negatively charged fabric surface, such as yeah. a piece of clothing with static cling, neutralising the, char- the charge and acting as a lubricant. Who knew? Tumble dryer sheets acting as a lubricant. That's absolutely amazing, isn't it? On the subject of the old tumble dryer. That, of course, is employing the Leibniz condenser principle or the Van de Graaff generator, isn't it? I think it's the Van de Graaff generator. Is it, it not the one... Um, it's creating a static the, charge, the, isn't the it? The flux converter. The flux, the flux capacitor, flux I think. Flux capacitor, it's yeah. <laughs> Flux capacitor. Oh. Um, Have you seen her flux capacitor? I can tell you it's a thing of beauty. Um, tum- the, 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 the tumble dryers. Can some? I was going to buy one of those balls. That How is your flux dryer. capacitor? A flux capacitor, it's fine. It could do with a bit of defluffing at the moment. It's a bit, bit musty. Now, you know those balls you can buy to put in the tumble dryer and they've got little nodules on them, rubber balls? No, you've no idea. <laughs> and you've, you're back on the flux capacitor thing yeah. still. Do you have them? Well, well then I don't have to tell you. You don't, can't tell me that. <laughs> With the weather we have, Fiona's whites are only white for five days in the year. Leaving whites out overnight is supposed to heighten them too. Brighten them. Oh, I wouldn't leave them out overnight. No, because if you leave them out overnight, we have a huge you amount the of... morning uh, dew on them then. The last thing you want is a morning dew on your Take me clothes. out in the morning dew. Ira Gershwin, he was a morning dew. Was he? Yeah, well he was when George died. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the uses Gershwins for tumble are great, dryer. Aren't they? Yeah. yeah, I was reading their bio. I was so sad. George Gershwin. I didn't know this. He died of a, a malignant brain tumor, like a really nasty mm. thing, when he was thirty-eight years old. But that whole Tin Pan Alley stuff from like the early. Oh, it's really. It's, Do you know? I'm. Songs. I'm. I've uh, decided. I've. I've An Sammy Khan is well, Sammy. Yeah. Sammy Khan is one of my f- favorite uh, songwriters. He wrote, for instance, Three Coins and a Fountain. I mm. think just for it. And I've just been tracking down like so many of the songs that he wrote for people like Sinatra and lots of others besides as well. And it, gee, the songs are just amazing. Yeah. Just amazing. Yeah. But the Gershwins, pretty, Brilliant. pretty oh, difficult to beat. Kind of American songbook mm. stuff. Brilliant songs, brilliant production. Last Porky and Bess. Say. What about us yeah. doing that? Porky and Bess. Yeah, I don't know any songs. I'd have to learn them. No, I'm not doing, I'm not doing anything <laughs> I have to learn. <laughs> Um, anyway, you can use tumble dryer sheets to who knew fresh and smelly shoes. Put a, a tumble dryer sheet into the offending. Anybody pair. with a husband who doesn't wear normal adult shoes or your teenage son, this is going to help you out. Yeah, this yeah, is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and let sit overnight. Equally, if you're very smelly trainers, as I do, because yeah. you walk the dog yeah. and they get yeah. wet, etc., yeah. etc. Yeah. Et yeah. 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 Let sit overnight. Did not know that. No. You can use a tumble dryer sheet to remove static from clothing, hair, TV screens, and computer monitors. <laughs> Equally, you could use a J-cloth, though, so... Um, loosen caked-on food from a pan. Now, I can't imagine this, because... Do you know, these tumble dryer sheets, they look like... Like, they're dry. How many things have you done with the tumble dryer sheets so a far, shitload. though? shitload. This is the third one of a possible... Can't remember. What? Five. Is it, is it all tumble dryer no, sheets? No, no, there's other stuff. Okay. Listen, this is really good. But apparently, if you put a fresh tumble dryer sheet in the bottom of a dirty pan, yeah. fill with lukewarm tap water and then let it sit overnight, the pan will be easier to clean in the morning. No, 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 Actually, no, no. You know what? what you need is fairy power spray. I'm now, so I don't care if there's uranium in this, right? <laughs> And you can actually, you're going, oh, it's actually, it's actually melting the pan and everything. Forget the dirt. That's a manly spray. But if you, you leave water on any pan overnight. Do you, I like the way that men have to soak all pots. What? You know, like my husband can't just put, like a pot that has had potatoes in it. Oh, yeah. He can't just put it in the tumble dryer. No, he has to soak it overnight. No, because we want, we no, want to lazy. get it really clean. Um, you can prevent old books from smelling musty when in storage. Sorry, I just spat on myself there. By sticking a dryer sheet between the pages of your beloved copy of Pride and Prejudice. If you What'll that do it. again, sorry? It stops us from get, getting musty while in storage. Why would you have it in storage? What do I mean? If how many years would you be talking? Yeah, your that's marriage is broken up. Give and me you've had back to take Pride and Prejudice. a container out in, the, in, uh, in City Give West. Give me back my Pride and Prejudice. Buy a packet of um, tumble dryer sheets. But who knew? 
Velcro. You're going to love this. There's some really bad ideas of what you can do with Velcro, but there's also some really good ones. And I'm going to give you some information about Velcro. You have an awful lot of paper with you there this morning. And it's also not bits of uh, magazines no, or newspapers. This, this is it's good. Proper research. Yeah. Um, Velcro, the name, if, if this ever comes up in a pub quiz, here's the question. Well, I've given you the answer. But if you ever have a pub quiz where they say, what material is a combination of the words crochet and velour and was developed in the 1940s? by Swiss inventor George de Mestral, who returned home from a walk with his dog and noticed that pesky cockleburs, never knew what they were called, had stuck to his pants and his dog's coat and he invented Velcro as a result. Absolutely amazing. Isn't that brilliant? It's not 100% reliable Velcro though, you know? No, it's not. And it does tend to wear out. Mm. And also, I think it looks a bit crap. I have to say. Now, one of the things that you can do with it, for example, is prevent a jacket or a blouse from gaping open. Now, personally, I'm in favour of jackets and blouses gaping, gaping open. open. I think that's what's the point otherwise. But they do suggest that you sew small pieces of Velcro <laughs> between the buttons to create a smooth surface and wreck your top and make you look mental. No, I'll just make you look mad but when you actually open up your top. People say, you what's the do? Velcro thing but for But here's there? something you can do if you've got small kids, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and my daughter and I would be a perfect candidate for this. I have to admit, I think this is a really good idea. Buy a strip of Velcro. You get it in hickeys or any kind of fabric shop. It comes on a roll. And you basically attach it to the bedroom wall. And they have to, when they're tidying up their, so- their cuddly toys... They can stick them to the Velcro all along the way. Did you ever play idea, the, the the game that had you put on a Velcro? It's a good idea. Yes, it is a good idea. The Velcro helmet. Oh, and you have to catch soft balls. Yeah. No, I've seen it, it's but good. I've never played it. It's good it. when you're very, very drunk. You've the Velcro helmet. <laughs> have you ever played that game where you put the post-it note on your forehead, uh, which says who you are? Uh, no, but it and, sounds uh, good. Ah, you must have played this kind of Go on. standard party game where you have a group of people and everyone has to, you write on a post-it note the name of, we say Napoleon, right? And then I would put it on your forehead so that you can't see oh, I don't know. Napoleon, but everyone well, else can see forehead. that you're Napoleon. Okay. And then you say things like, am I alive? Am I dead? It's all yes, no questions, but it can be literally anyone. Like I could put Fiona Looney on your forehead yeah. and then I would literally be on your face. You don't know where to go from there, do you? I do. Uh, I do. I, <laughs> what questions would you ask, though? You could ask whatever you want. It's a very good game. But unfortunately, very if you play it when you're very drunk, you can sometimes forget that it's actually on your face. Um, I do remember... Shall I name him? Shall I shame him? I will. Niall Stokes. Niall podcast. Stokes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Many years He's still ago, alive. He's still alive. Um, many years ago, and actually he wasn't very drunk, which is, makes it even sadder. We used to play a game in Hot Press years ago. See, That's when you worked for. When Hot I worked Press. for Hot Press, called Glue Ball, um, which was. Uh, oh, should you really tell? No, us? it's fine. It was we used to make these balls out of um, cow gum, which was what we used to lay out the new the the paper with at the time, and you could make these little hard rubber balls, and they were really bouncy. And in our old offices in Wicklow Street, we used to play this game. It was like handball, for like all the super words. balls. No, or it was like balls. handball where you'd. No, but they were, were they yeah, l- yeah, they were, yeah. Where, like little jet balls where you'd yeah. lash it against the wall and you'd have to hit it with your hand. And, you know, there were very complicated rules. When this must have been during a high output very late time in Hot Press, wasn't it? You'd always play it on a Monday night after the yeah. pages were gone to the printer. So it'd be like two o'clock in the morning. Mm. And uh, it was an Australian... We ma- made up all these rules for it. Actually, in fairness, I think John Waters was responsible for making up most of the rules. John Waters. Name him and shame him as well. Yes. I think he made up most of the rules. Yeah. But we decided, we made up a whole history for it, and it was an Australian game. So the referee was called the Rolf Harris. And if you were the Rolf Harris, you had to wear a picture of Rolf Harris on your head. And Niles Stokes was the Rolf Harris this particular evening. And so he had a picture, a huge photograph of Rolf Harris taped to his head, um, which he obviously forgot was there. And the glue ball went out onto the street and hit a guard (laughs) at about two o'clock in the morning. So the guard obviously investigated this and then, you know, was ringing on the doorbell and Niall Stokes had to go down and explain to him what was going on and was there trying to explain this while he had a picture of Rob Harris on his head. <laughs> and so what do you do now, Mr Stokes? And Niall is I'm there, the I'm, editor of I'm a magazine. I'm the editor of Ireland's leading rock and roll publication. <laughs> and he just did this for no reason at all. A photograph of Rob Harris attached to his head. Oh, happy days. Happy. Put on your headphones there. Why? <laughs> and tell me that you love me. Uh, Martina, good morning. Sorry, how are you? Well, underwater. Oh, Martina's <laughs> underwater. How are you? How are you? <laughs> Not bothering yourself. Good, that sounds much better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that better. That's yes. Much, yeah. Yes. 
Yes. Um, well, when I was, I do use the balls in the tumble dryer. I find them very, very good. Do they make a difference to the? Like, I, think, I think they do because um, I would have say jeans because I I'd be a farmer's wife and you know yourself that with the dirt and the whole lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I find that when I take the jeans out straight away, I wouldn't have to iron them. But you know does, it, I mean? does it mean that they could, does it a shorter time? Um, I would only put them in for about twenty minutes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. As and I find that, that they're grand for they're a wet it. pair of jeans. Oh yeah, well, not, no, not a really wet pair, but I mean a kind of a dampish pair. Yeah, and just put them in and put the balls in, and definitely I find that they they are good help. Is he filthy? Yeah. Is he? Huh? Is he filthy? Oh, I couldn't tell you that. <laughs> Would you be coming up covered in shite? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Oh. I'm shouting at you to clean me up. Sorry. You're all, you're you're underwater again, Martina. Oh, Bob snorkeling again. a little Sorry. bit. Yeah. Sorry. What part yeah. of the country are you from, Martina? I'm from County Mead. Well oh. done. The Mead people are very honest. Yes, yes, yes. No bother at all. Okay. Well done. Well done. She's now decided to herself just towards the end of the conversation. Why did I actually ring up yeah. those people? I thought she'd won that competition. Oh Obviously Jesus! Not. The competition. <laughs> the competition. Have you got to do the competition? Do you need to do it now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry about that. We have to do the competition right, now. Have to do oh, we've loads more than that. Oh, we'll yeah. do that next oh, week. There's don't enough worry, for the whole panic. week. Hold God, on. we get months out of that. Um, where is it? Hold on. Have you got the winner? Hold on. No, wait a second. Kidnapped in Bolivia. Here we are. Have you got it? Oh, are you going to put somebody on and pretend to them that they're one of three people on the line? And then yes, yeah, exactly. Okay, grand. The, the question was, if you want to win tickets to Croke Park to see um, a Munster playing Leinster in the Heineken Semi Cup final, which you'd be interested in. What time you? is that on it? What do you mean, what, what time is it? What time is I the kick-off? You're what meant time? to like rugby. Yeah, but I know, but I don't know what time it is. Okay, oh, I'll, right, look okay. It up. I'll look it up. I'll look it up. Um, we're, we're throwing in um, a night in the four-star clarion IFSC. It's difficult to say that. And a thousand euros, right? Yeah. And you can spend it whatever way you wish. The question we asked was, who was named captain of this year's British and Irish Lions squad? Was it Brian O'Driscoll? Was it Paul O'Connell? Or was it Gavin Henson? I think now we're going to talk to a lady. Oh, right. Susan Stanley, good morning. Morning, Jerry. How are you? Very good. How are you? Oh, I'm great. This is a great surprise. And are you a rugby fan, are you? Oh, I'm an out-and-out monster fan, yes. Oh, right. An out-and-out monster fan. That's fair enough. Uh, we won't say anything more about that, but of course, um, the monster people believe that rugby was actually invented in monster. Isn't that right? It's in the Guinness Book of Records, actually, Jerry. <coughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, the question we asked was, um, who was named captain of this year's British and Irish Lions squad? Was it Brian O'Driscoll? Was it Paul O'Connell? Or was it Gavin Henson? And it is, of course, Paul O'Connell. Absolutely yeah. correct. Now, unfortunately, you're person number two, so that means that you don't win. Not to worry, not to worry. It was a pleasure talking to you in any case. He's lying, Susan. <laughs> He's always lying. <laughs> <laughs> not to worry. I can never tell the ladies the truth. <laughs> it's a mad thing inside me that makes me say I, something completely bit, different to the truth. We call it a lie. <laughs> <laughs> No, listen, listen to me, listen to me. Don't hang up, right? Right. You have won. I have not. Oh, he yes, you have. He never listened to the programme. <laughs> you, you have won the tickets. Oh, you're not a ball hopper, you know. <laughs> the, the, tickets to the, the tickets to the Munster Leinster Heineken Semi Cup final, right? Okay. Um, Fantastic. And that will take place obviously in Croker on May the 2nd. We're also going to throw in one night in the four star Clarion IFSC hotel and a thousand euros as well as the best tickets in the house. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! Yee ha! Mm. You're absolutely oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Okay, well done. Thank Great you. One, Susan. Goodbye. Mm. Sit on my mm. face and tell me that you love me.